One of the reasons I pick up a brush and paint is because there is light in the scene that I wanna portray. Some of my favorite scenes are these end of day, evening scenes, and night scenes where I really need to create a strong, believable source of light. And today I'm gonna to show you my exact process and how I do this. In order to push the light, we need strong contrast. So the first thing we wanna think about when creating strong contrast is to use fresh paint. Before I take on a nocturne scene, I squeeze out fresh paint in order to ensure that I can get a very rich mixture. So here you can see, I went ahead and laid out a drawing for the scene, and here's a look at my reference photo. And there's a powerful feeling of light on this shed, and that is really gonna be the focal area of the scene. And let me quickly scan ahead and show you where we're going with this. So we're gonna lay in the light values and come in with some really thick paint and end up with a scene like this. So let me walk you through how I got to this. What I'm gonna do is tone the light areas of the paper. So I'm creating a thin mixture of raw sienna, quinacridone gold, thin warm wash to establish the light here in this scene. Now understanding that I'm gonna be painting around all the other areas to get much, much darker, but this is the lightest area of the painting. So I have to keep that in mind. So I'm dropping in these warm colors and letting them flow into each other, leaving the front facing part of that shed as the brightest part of my scene. And then I move around the scene and I paint the lightest values. Here's a look at that. And you'll see here, I let some warm and cool mix on the paper, knowing that this is the warm area of my shadow. And if you look here in the reference photo, you can see the same thing happening. It's where the cool shadows meet the warm colors of the light. And I wanted to create that here as well. Also, you'll notice that I've left some lighter areas on these houses in the background. And that is because I want to go back in later with a touch of gouache and create a feeling of these porch lights. That's a nice element of the scene that I would definitely like to include. So I went ahead and connected some of this wet wash down with what's going on here in the bottom. I will be going over all of this again to make it much darker as we go. So after I lay in my warmest values, it's time to let this dry. And then once I come back, I can start to really push the values and paint a lot stronger. I'm going to go over the sky once again so I can really darken that up and push the light here in my focal area. I'm mixing up a rich blend of dark blue colors. I'm using some ultramarine blue, some cerulean, a little bit of lavender, and some Payne's Gray to create a really rich mixture for this sky. I'm working with a medium-sized brush, and I start at the top of the scene and work my way down, going right through where those trees are gonna be, knowing that I'm gonna paint the trees darker over the top of the sky. And it might seem like I'm going too dark for the sky, but you really wanna push these values in order for the light to really be strong in this painting. So I'm working my way down the sky. Now, as I get lower in the sky, I have to start avoiding the areas of light that I wanna preserve. So there's a little bit of light on this porch. I'm painting around that, and I definitely wanna preserve the light here. So I'm painting right up, and then I'm taking this wet bead and connecting it into the shadow side of this main shed. Always trying to work from a wet edge. I go back, I reload my brush, I come back, and work from a wet edge, trying to make all of this very connected. And I switch to some warmer colors to use around this light area. And I again, I just let those colors flow right into each other. And I still have this wet edge back here that I can work with. And I'm throwing in some darker areas painting that house, still working wet into wet and connecting all of this as one big shape. And you'll notice that the shadow on the road, I went ahead and connected right into this wash. All of that is gonna connect. And here, what I'm doing is I'm taking a clean brush, a, a clean damp brush, and I wanna soften this edge. If you'll notice up in the reference photo, there's a soft edge on that shadow, and I wanna create the same thing here in my painting. I don't want such a hard edge on that shadow, so I'm softening that edge. 
And as you learn to get more comfortable with watercolor and you, you kind of learn to know the look that you're going for and what you can get away with when. As long as that is damp, I can soft that edge and I can leave some harder, more defined edges around the scene. And I think that really helped the light feel more believable there. And it also kind of keeps our eye from getting stuck right here with a hard edge and we can look back into the scene and get lost in it a little bit more. After I have softened up that edge, I'm coming in and connecting that right into the fence. Again, I wanna keep this connection going. And I'm using some warmer colors here, some raw sienna, neutral tint. And now I'm adding some cooler colors where the fence is gonna be in shadow. I don't like to just use one mixture in a large area of the scene. I try to create little variations in every wash. You can see a little warm here, with some cool color, warm here with cool color, just mix it up. Variety is important. I don't wanna use the same wash in a very large part of the scene. Keep adding little bits of variety. It's a beautiful part of our medium that we really need to take advantage of. And so this darker area down here, I'm connecting that right into the fence and we're, you can see that we are creating a nice area of interest where we're getting the, the color changes and the contrast. Right here, we can already start to see where the focus of the painting is supposed to be. So I continue down with this, and then I have a cool shadow wash that I wanna mix right into the edge of this while this is still damp. So you're really starting to get this theme here, connecting, connecting, everywhere, trying to find connections. Now that I've done that, I can start to tweak and make little additions and finesse this a little bit. And one thing I wanna do is take a damp brush and I wanna soften the edge around some of these porch lights. I really wanna get that glow effect that light has. So again, back to a damp brush that is clean, and I'm just gonna push down and lift off some of those areas around the light on these porches in the background. And I think that makes a nice difference. Creating that little bit of glow goes a long ways in creating a realistic feeling of light. Now we are to the part in the painting that is really gonna make this light stand out. We're getting into the darks. And if you squint at the scene, you can see the darkest parts are the trees behind the houses and the trees that kind of frame up this shed here. And so I have a dark mixture. I'm using more of my rich colors. I'm using some neutral tint, some ultramarine blue, and really creating a thick mixture. And I'm using a softer brush here. I want some of these trees to have a nice broken edge. And so I'm, I've loaded up this soft brush and I'm working on creating that feeling. But you can tell that right away when we start getting these darks in, the light really starts to become apparent in our painting. And I think that's really the trick of doing a nocturne scene is having the patience, understanding that whatever you do in one wash is setting yourself up for the next wash. And after you can begin to understand that process, you can be a little bit more patient and you can really see your paintings come to life when you stick to that process. So I'm working my way around the scene, adding these darks that are really making a big difference and bringing the light. And I like that nice light pole right here in front of this bright area. Again, I want my most contrast right around here. And we're getting to the point where we're just down to some little details to finish the scene. I like adding a few little directional lines and some texture. The hard work and the heavy lifting of this painting is done, and these little bits of details can really direct our eye around the scene and bring a finished feel to the painting. The trick always when you get to the detail stage is to not overdo it. The temptation is to look at the reference photo and get immersed in all the little details around the scene. What I suggest doing is looking at the focal area first, working around that area, really keeping this in mind the whole time. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm adding some details to this shed. There's some little slats of wood that are creating cast shadows on the surface of that shed, and I wanna create some of that detail. And I also recommend practicing on a little scrap piece of paper, getting your mark right, making sure you have the right consistency on your brush before you commit to something on your painting. So many times I've gotten to the end of my painting and that's when your brain is most tired, but it's when you need to be the most careful. And one wrong move, you create something that you don't like. It's this domino effect of trying to fix what you don't like. It's not fun. So if you can 
use some scrap paper, figure out what type of mark you're wanting to make first. You can be more confident and you can lessen those times when you create something that you're not happy with. Now I'm going and adding a few little details, a few little broken bits of texture on the porch back here of these houses. Add enough interest around the scene. Another little vertical. Verticals are, are nice in composition. So after I got those little bits of details in, I decided I wanted a little punch of light. And in order to do this, I'm using some gouache. I don't use a lot of it, but it is great for these little times when I need a little punch of light. And look at the difference that makes by adding in that little porch light. The reason that this little glow is here makes so much more sense when you have a little dot of light. I like that much better. It's a subtle touch, but I think it makes a nice difference. And sometimes if you think the gouache is just a little too stark, you can smudge it with your finger a little bit. It creates almost like a lens flare effect. And I like doing that as well. This is a very fun part of the painting. None of this works if you don't take your time to really build up your values and have a clear game plan from the very start of the painting. One last thing I wanted to do was do a light glaze on top of this shed. I felt like by making it a little warmer and a little darker, it would help this area read just a little bit better and keep the focus of light really there on the face of the shed. I did a light little glaze with some raw sienna and I went ahead and covered the whole top of the roof. And there you have it. That is a look at how I paint a nocturne scene. And here you can see me take the tape off and there's a look at the final painting. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? Have you ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.